Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Block Party. Today we're learning how to piece a sun explosion block and you can click right here to find this quilt pattern at leahday.com. So this is our last block. We're going to be finishing up our beautiful sunshine surprise quilt and we're going to be making a nice combination of shapes just to review. So another square and a square block some flying geese, and of course, half square triangles. So let's get started learning how to piece a sun explosion block step by step together. So let's get started first piecing our square in a square block. You're gonna get started with your fabric B squares. We're gonna cut them in half diagonally. So just set up your ruler right over it and slice those squares in half. And you can see how we're gonna piece this on all around that fabric C square in the center. I'll line this up. Carefully cut across. Okay. So to line this up, we have cut this just a little bit big. These pieces are just a bit big. And the easiest thing that I found is to fold it in half and create a little crease line right at the top and do the same thing with your triangle very gently fold it in half and press a little crease line with your fingertips and then you can line it up just exactly right take it to your machine and stitch right across quarter inch seam allowance and go on ahead and stitch the triangles to the top and bottom exactly that way so i have my pen placed and i'm just smoothing out the triangle over the square making sure everything's in nice alignment I'll slide it underneath my foot and start stitching. And I think it's important to pin in this situation because it lines everything up really nice and even. You're gonna have this triangle overhang slightly on both sides. You want it to line up right in the middle of that square. So stitch all the way down and then just repeat the exact same process on the opposite side. So even before I press those triangles open and those seams open, I'm gonna go on ahead and trim up these little triangles on the edges. I'm just lining up my ruler really carefully and I'll lop off those little triangles. Be careful not to cut the fabric C square, just cut off the extra fabric, that fabric B, those little, these little schniblets. <laughs> and then of course, Take those pieces, finger press them open nicely, and then press with a hot dry iron. So the final step to our square and a square block, I'm gonna fold it in half. Again, just lining up those two seam lines and do a little finger crease right in the middle. Do the exact same thing to your triangle. Fold it in half, give it a little finger crease, and then line up those two creases so that they're exactly in alignment. Pin it in place. And now let's take it to the machine and stitch through it one more time. We're gonna go on ahead and attach this side and this side and our square and a square unit will be complete. So I'm gonna slide this under the foot the exact same way we stitched the first set, making sure everything's nice and smooth from the edge of the triangle down to the pin and just making sure that the edges stay nicely stacked on top of one another and in alignment with the edge of that patchwork foot. And one thing that's really important because we're pressing all of these seam allowances open is to lower your stitch length to 1.5, or in this case, my machine only goes uh, down to 1.4. It doesn't hit 1.5 for some reason. So that's the setting that I select. So I produce a nice tight stitch so I can press those seam allowances open. And I always stitch through these scraps just because it gets my foot up to the right height and it keeps those thread tails from making a big mess and wasting a lot of my bobbin thread whenever you pull out those long thread tails. You know, it stops you from accidentally getting everything sucked down in the machine too. So it's really helpful just to stitch through a little scrap, get started, and you can see how quickly this flows straight from one side and into the other, piecing these triangles on really quickly. So really the square and the square unit might be something that you might wanna cut out a lot of these and make a whole quilt with them. I think it'd be really cool. 
So here's our square in the square block. And of course, we've got to press these seam allowances open from the back. So just really gently open that seam. You can see I like to run my fingernail across it just so it's nice and open and flat. And then we're going to press it flat, permanently flat, with a hot, dry iron. And I really like to finger press rather than trying to dig the seam open with the tip of an iron. That really doesn't get it as flat. And uh, it can also kind of create some shiny marks, some scorch marks slightly on your fabric. So always finger, finger press first and then hit it with an iron. Now you've got your block together. Just refer to your pattern. You're going to trim this up, making sure to align your ruler with these points to make sure this is trimmed up nice and square. So trim this up according to the instructions of your pattern and that unit will be complete. So the next thing we're going to create are some half square triangles. You want to take two fabric D squares and layer them, stack them together with a fabric A square. And then draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. So you have two stacks, two squares each. We're going to take this to the machine and stitch exactly a quarter of inch from either side of that marked line. So I'm just taking a second to make sure everything's nicely lined up. I'm going to line up the edge of my presser foot with that line and stitch on down. Just want to make sure that that stays nice and straight and they stay in good alignment. You don't want to be wiggly wobbly here. The chain pieces I'm going to stitch right onto a little scrap clip off my half square triangle and then rotate it around and we're going to stitch exactly a quarter inch from the opposite side. Just rotate it around and do the exact same thing. Line up the edge of your presser foot with that line and stitch nice and straight. The next step is to cut the half square triangles apart just by cutting right on that marked line. And you'll end up with two half square triangles for every set of two squares that you piece together. I think that's really cool. So now open out that seam allowance. And this is on the bias, so be real gentle as you open that up. And I like to use my fingernail to get that nice and open and then hit it with a hot, dry iron. So that's your half square triangle. Refer to your pattern and trim this down really carefully so you're ready to move on to the next step. So the next thing we're going to create are some flying geese units. You're going to need some fabric B rectangles and some fabric D squares. And I have marked this, I prepped it up by marking a diagonal line from corner to corner. And now I'm going to line this square up, making sure that the top, left side, and bottom are all nicely aligned together. We're going to take it to the machine and stitch from the center to that corner. So I always like to start in the center because it's just less of a risk that everything's going to get sucked down into your machine and kind of gag on you. It's also why I stitch onto those little scraps before and after every line of stitching. It just helps keep everything nice and neat and clean and reduces the chance of having a thread break. I'm going to stitch right off. And you want to just stitch right on the line. Stay as accurately and, and right on top of it as you possibly can. That looks great. So here's what it looks like with that seam stitched. And I'm going to take that fabric D square and fold it down and give it a good finger crease. And this is one of those situations where I make an exception. Usually I go in and trim away this extra flap of fabric. But in this situation, I'm not going to do that because as you can see, that orange fabric could shadow through the cream fabric. You'd be able to see it. By leaving that extra layer of cream fabric here, you're not going to be able to see it. So that's how I'm going to do this particular unit. It's just going to have just a little bit of extra fabric there, but it's not going to be a problem. So the next step is to layer another fabric D square and you want to make sure to mark it. And when marking really light fabrics like this, I just use a regular lead pencil and I mark really lightly. I mean, I'm, I'm barely making a mark and it's nothing to worry about because your stitching is going to cover that and you won't be able to see it. 
So we're gonna take this to the machine and do the exact same thing. Start in the middle, stitch right along that marked line to the corner. Again, I'm gonna fold down that fabric D square to form my triangle. Give it a nice finger crease. You wanna make sure that as much of that fabric that wants to fold over is folding over to reach that corner. And I'm not gonna trim. I'm gonna leave all of those layers of fabric in place so that way I won't have any shadow through. So now we're gonna take that flying geese unit and expand it with little strips of fabric D. So the first step is to piece one strip of fabric D to the bottom of your flying geese unit. You wanna make sure that this is being lined up with that wide edge of the triangle. So take this to your machine and stitch along that seam. Press that seam allowance open, and here's what the unit will look like next. Next, you're going to flip over these shorter strips of fabric D, right sides together, take them to your machine and stitch both of those seams, and here's what your finished unit will look like. Make sure to take the time to press all of those seam allowances open, nice and flat, and that's what your side units are gonna look like. You'll need four of these, and let's take them and lay out our block to see how it's gonna look next. To create your sun explosion block, you're gonna place your square and a square block in the center and surround it with our side units with these beautiful flying geese. You wanna make sure all of these are pointing outward and then surround those, put in the corners, our half square triangles, and also make sure that these are pointing outwards as well. So to piece your block, you're just going to work in rows, piecing these units together, and then piece the rows together, making sure to match seams. Attach your borders, and here's what it looks like when you finish block number 12. So that's it for this video. I really enjoyed teaching you how to piece this beautiful sun explosion block, and you can click right here to find this quilt pattern at leahday.com. This is our last block for this block party, but the party's not over because we're gonna be starting a brand new quilt along next year. And here's a little sneak peek of our first block. So definitely join in the fun of the machine quilting block party as it continues in 2017 with the Flower Festival quilts. I can't wait to teach you more about piecing and machine quilting next year. Until next time, let's go quilts.